Hey guys, it's Courtney and welcome to day six of the coloring series. Today we are going to be talking about gouache, which I only have one brand here, which is the Arteza, and I'm not very experienced with these, but they are pretty fun to work with. So as you can see, they come in a tube here, pretty much similar to a lot of the watercolors. It's a pretty big uh, amount that we get here and you're going to pretty much treat it like watercolor so you're going to squirt a little bit out onto a palette you can let it cure which means that you can reactivate it with water at a later time or you can use it right away you will want to make sure that you are using a waterproof ink or if you are doing something like a no line you can certainly use like an antique linen distress ink similar to watercolor you can also go over heat embossed images with no problem at all. Now you can use all different kinds of paper with gouache, which makes it very different from regular watercolor. Of course, you can use it on watercolor paper, but you can also use it on a heavyweight cardstock. So each one of these colors are going to give you a little bit of information on the tube. They're gonna show you the opacity as well as the light fast. So you can either get two pluses or three pluses and light fast just basically means is it going to discolor over time as it's exposed to light and things like that. Now we also have some pearlescent colors in this set as well as some metallics. So let's test these out onto some paper and see how they look. So I have a piece of Canson watercolor paper here as well as a piece of heavyweight black cardstock. Like I said, you can use any color cardstock here because there is most of these are opaque to some certain extent. You just want to make sure that you're using a heavyweight cardstock because we will be applying a little bit of water. So I'm going to squirt a little bit of these three pinks onto an acrylic block. You can pretty much use anything you want for a palette, but this was just right next to me. So this is what we're using today. And a little bit goes a long way. So you don't need a whole lot. This is actually way more than I needed for this video. So first I am going to take a paintbrush here and I'm going to dip it in water just like we would normally with watercolor. Now the difference between the watercolor paper and the black cardstock is that the watercolor paper is meant to hold a lot of water where the black cardstock is not. So I can pretty much go in with the same kind of watercolor techniques with the watercolor paper where once I switch to the black cardstock, I kind of have to switch it up a little bit just by using a little bit less water. So with the wet paintbrush, I'm just gonna go in with this darker pink onto some watercolor paper, and you really can't even tell the difference between this and regular watercolor. But then I'm gonna go in with just a damp paintbrush, and I don't have much water on this at all, and I go on to the black cardstock. And you can see this is not really showing up. You can still see the pink, but it's not as intense as the watercolor paper. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. Next, we're gonna go on to this next kind of medium pink. Do the same thing on both of these papers, just adding a little bit more water to the watercolor paper and a little bit less on the black cardstock. And you can see this really shows up on the black cardstock. I get a really nice gradient. You can kind of see in areas as it dries. If I were to compare this to inks, which I know most of you are card makers, so that's the easiest thing to compare it to, is once they dry, they dry more like a Distress Oxide versus a Distress Ink. So the Distress Ink would be more of a watercolor, Distress Oxides would be more of a gouache, if I had to compare. So next we're going to blend some of these colors. So I'm gonna try a wet on wet technique with the watercolor paper by just adding some clean water to the paper and then dropping in my color. And you can see that it pretty much spreads very similar to regular watercolors. But just remember that the only difference between these on a wet and wet on wet techniques such as this is that they are opaque. So yes, they will blend nicely together, but if you go directly over a darker color with a lighter color, you're gonna tone it down a lot because the, the lighter color is gonna basically cover the darker, if that makes sense. So next I scribbled down some of the lighter pink here with quite a bit of water, not flooding it, but quite a bit of water. And then I'm gonna drop in some of these darker pinks while it's still wet. And similar to watercolors, it's going to spread. It doesn't spread quite as much as regular watercolors. This is almost a mix, and I don't think this is true, but this is what it reminds me of. It is a mixture between watercolors and acrylic paints. So a lot of times you will see 
you will be able to get textures like you do with acrylic paints. So next for the black card stock, I'm going to try a little bit of blending here with just the wet on dry technique because remember this isn't watercolor paper. So I dropped in a little bit of that darker color than the medium pink and then the light pink. And of course the darker pink is not quite as opaque as the other two. And you do have to work at it a little bit, especially on the darker card stock. We're using less water and it doesn't spread as it does on watercolor paper. So you do have to work on it just a little bit more, but overall Overall, I was not upset with the results. You do end up with a lot of texture to it, just like you would with acrylic paints. So let's see if these dry back or get lighter as they dry, similar to watercolors. So I'm going to go in with a pretty wet paintbrush. It was a little bit too dry to begin with, but I added up more water and I'm going to add all three of these pinks onto some watercolor paper. Similar, just making swatches pretty much, but they are pretty wet. They're not soaking wet where I'm making puddles, but they're wet enough where it's gonna take a little bit of dry time. And by the way, these do dry a little bit faster than watercolors as well, um, maybe because they don't take as much water, but they do dry fairly quickly. And this time I'm going to bring in my heat gun and speed this up just a little bit, just like I did in the previous videos, so that we can see the drying in, well, sped up. <laughs> <laughs> to see if these dry back. And you can see they're not changing at all. But something you can't see on camera is that the finish is more like an acrylic paint rather than a watercolor. But overall, they keep their color. So on each one of these tubes, you are going to see a little square. And this little square is either going to be filled in completely, so it's going to be a white square, or you are going to see a diagonal line through it. And this is going to show you the opacity of these colors. So you can see that this darker pink has that diagonal line where the other two do not. The other two are much more opaque than this darker pink, which explains why it's not really showing up that great on the black cardstock. So next we're gonna just see how these pearl colors and these metallics show up on darker cardstock, just so that you guys can get an idea. I know that there's so many different kinds of metallic and pearlescent watercolors out there, and I'll be honest with you guys, I don't own a single one of them. Um, I've always found that if I wanted to get a background or something like that with pearlescent or metallic, I just reach for my gouache, and I get pretty similar results, and it dries super quick, and it can go on any paper at all. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water to each one of these and kind of create a gradient. Once again, these are opaque, so I can kind of start off with a, with quite a bit of paint on my paintbrush and kind of go to nothing. And it looks a little bit strange when the paper is still wet, but as it dries, it will dry a lot smoother. So that was a pearlescent pink, and now I'm gonna go on to the silver, and I get pretty similar results. They're super easy to use for this. So, so easy, they go on so smooth. So you can see, well, you probably can't see it on camera because you never can, but there is a ton of shimmer and a ton of metallic and pearls and everything that we love as card makers in these colors. So let's go ahead and color some images. I'm using the same image that I've used the last couple of days, and we're going to start on with some watercolor paper. So for this first one here, I'm going to do the wet on dry. So I'm going to color this middle petal here and I'm going to go in with a damp paintbrush and just add a little bit of this darker color to the bottom and then go on to the medium color, then the lighter color on top. And you'll see that I do have to work back and forth because these do not blend like watercolors exactly. They blend similar, but not exactly. You have to work at these a little bit more. And honestly, that's another advantage of the gouache is that you can layer it over and over. Remember, these are more opaque than watercolors. So you can layer them on top of one another until you get the results that you are looking for. 
So for the next one, I was pretty happy with the way this one turned out. For the next one, I am going to try some wet on wet techniques. So I'm going to go in with a damp paintbrush and I'm going to cover the entire petal with just clean water and then drop in my color and just kind of let it do its thing. I do have to work at it just a little bit more than watercolor, meaning I kind of have to move my brush around. With watercolor, I kind of just drop the color and let it do its thing. Um, <laughs> but for the most part, you get pretty good results this way as well um, and you never know how it's going to turn out and that's what I love about all watercolor medium is that sometimes it's a surprise <laughs> the way it turns out and sometimes you love it sometimes you hate it but at least you learn something from it each and every time and remember these are reactive with water so if you aren't happy with it as it starts to dry and you're still not happy with it while it's still a little bit damp or still a little bit wet or even with gouache, even when it's dry, you can add a little bit more color. So next I'm gonna work on some black cardstock and I have white heat embossed these images and I'm gonna do the same thing for this first one. I am going wet on dry and you can see that I went right over the embossed area. No big deal, that'll wipe off later. <laughs> but I'm gonna do the same thing. I added a little bit of that dark to the bottom, the medium pink to the middle, and the light pink to the top. And for the life of me, I couldn't get these to blend nicely. So what I ended up doing is because, remember, these have very similar um, characteristics, I can say, of acrylic paint is that if you've ever colored with acrylic paint, if you've ever done like a paint and sip or anything like that, which are so fun, by the way, if you haven't, definitely try it. Um, you can get a lot of texture with acrylic paint because it's thick and it kind of lays on top of the paper a little bit more. And I can do that with gouache. So if I wanted to go in with that darker color and kind of start flicking up from the bottom, I can kind of create some texture with it. And I know it's very hard to see on camera, so I will hold this up so that you can kind of see a little bit more of the texture. But this would be great for flowers, great for animals or anything else that you're putting in your cards. So for this next one, I am just going to use the this pearlescent pinkish color. And I am going to add a little bit of this wet on dry, once again, to this entire petal. Now I wasn't really getting any kind of dimension or contrast. And if you guys know me, I it's like I need to see that in every image for my cards <laughs> anyway. Um, so I ended up mixing a little bit of this with the medium pink that we used for the first flower. And and it's still going to have a little bit of that pearlescent look to it, but I'm just going to change the color slightly. These colors or gouache mixes, as far as the different colors, you can mix them so nicely. They mix so well together. So I just added a little bit of that to the bottom and kind of worked my way up. Now for the silver, because I can't forget about the silver, what I love to use gouache for, and I know this has nothing to do with coloring, but we all love spatters, but sometimes our media is transparent. These aren't. So you can spatter this on your background, especially if you were to use white or silver to like a galaxy background, and it's not going to fade down. It, you're not gonna be able to see through it. It gives such beautiful spatters. So what if I made a mistake? Can I get rid of this? Well, normally with watercolors, we could. So I'm just gonna wet this petal down, pick it up with a paper towel, and you can see not so much on the black cardstock. However, on the watercolor paper, I'm going to reactivate this, take my paper towel, dab that up, and I'm pretty much left with almost a clean slate to start all over. So that was a quick little overview of gouache, which is super fun to play with. And I will be back tomorrow with the final day of the coloring series where I will be pulling out some miscellaneous items from my craft room and coloring in some stamped images with items you probably wouldn't think to use. So I will see you again tomorrow. Bye.